Hi, so I've decided to make another video about the RSX mod or the Orbis mod uh, which I have talked about in my previous video and I have tried to uh, explain how to you know get it done and uh, I've noticed it got a couple of thousand views and generated some opinions and then I realized that perhaps a lot of people weren't actually very familiar with uh, with electronics or you know these kind of extra details that I that a lot of us on the forum on the PSX place forum have learned so I wanted to do a bit of a backstory about how the whole thing got discovered so basically it all got started with this uh, thread on the PSX place forum where the user named Iceferum had shared pictures of the motherboard uh, the C E C H A uh, motherboard, uh, which is this one, which normally has 90 nanometer RSX, but his actually had 40 nanometer RSX. As you can see, he put the pictures to prove it. The die is smaller. You can see it here, and that means it was not the stock RSX model. So. Um, he was already suspecting it was refurbished by possibly official Sony service center as he wrote in here and later it actually was confirmed that it was in fact uh, repaired by the official Sony service center and that uh, they have it, it turned out they have been doing these kind of repairs uh, for some time and I guess you know a lot of people had no clue but um, the whole thing started with the fact that this board uh, was discovered and um, the people in this thread have realized that this is possible you know the community got curious about how this could be replicated um, I joined this thread at around seven pages and um, at the time we were just basically analyzing the board and trying to see what other mo modifications were necessary in order to do this kind of mod ourselves and it turned out that there were quite a few more components that were also that needed to be either replaced or modified and w the second most important component after this GPU chip that was uh, replaced as well was the syscon chip and if you go to this page, uh, this is meant for developers, but you know, I'm just gonna try to explain the basics here. So the Syscon chip is the main power controller chip, as you can see here, it's explained very well. Uh, and uh, it's basically very important chip, like the most important probably on the whole motherboard, because it controls voltages and just allows the communication happen between different components. In any case, if you go here, you can see all the syscon variants right here that were used on the FAT uh, PS3 models. And uh, if you check this one right here, which is COK001, which is exactly the same as what was posted on the picture, and you can see the factory version is usually this one which is 201 GB and then you go to see what was used in the refurbished uh, version and it was a different chip so if you click here it was version 304 GB and here it's also mentioned that this chip was only used with the uh, with the 90 with the 40 nanometer RSX in the refurbished motherboards um, and also on some other boards apparently as well. Uh, if you also go to check the COK002 motherboard which was also refurbished sometimes um, you will also see that the factory variant was 202 and then re the refurbished variant was 303 and that for that board they have used this model to install a 65 nanometer RSX so yeah different uh, RSX versions had required different syscon 
variants sometimes. Right. Um, I hope this made some kind of sense. But as you can see, there were other even other boards that were also refurbished, like this one, Dia001. Um, it also used this 304 GB Syscon. It was mentioned here. I've already shown it, but yeah, it also sometimes they have sometimes replaced uh, RSX even on that one. So they were basically repla replacing a lot of these 90 nanometer GPU chips, and um, you know, kind of makes you wonder why they, they probably knew something. They probably had a reason to replace them like maybe they didn't have the 90 nanometer ones left or maybe they knew that the 90 nanometer one was just not as reliable right but this is just one of the clues I think that is important to notice uh, about the reasoning behind the mod in any case um, the syscon chip was replaced but then there were of course more modifications that were done so as this thread kept getting more and more attention eventually somebody from indonesia had posted a link to another example of how a motherboard could be modified in order to allow installation of 40 nanometer rsx so after that we eventually got in touch with the person who had apparently been doing these kind of mods for a long time and he knew about it even a long time before he had studied all these refurbished motherboards himself and basically he had come up with an easier way to allow to, to install the 40 nanometer RSX and this is where the mod chip came from and I wanted to show you this picture also here and as you can see the first step that Sony is doing is they swap the old Syscon with the new one the one that can hold more data and um, obviously they also modify the code for it to support the new RSX so um, this part is also possible to replicate but it hasn't been tested thoroughly yet and so this is something I am not gonna go into details about uh, because like I say it needs to be tested first and it's something that is a lot more complicated than just putting the Orbis mod in because you actually need to program the new Syscon and you would need to use Bus Pirate for it so yeah this is basically the more complex version and it still needs to be tested the second step they do is they reconfigure the flex input output voltage by replacing the voltage regulator IC and actually this is something I can show you now oh, in a bit more detail this step 2 is this one and you can see here this is the chip BD3520 and uh, this is something they replace with BD3504 the difference between them is that this one the stock chip it constantly provides 1.2 volts so uh, it doesn't have configurable output but when they replace it with BD3504 um, that I see is allowing you to configure the output voltage as you wish and you can see the formula for the output configurations in the datasheet of this IC so if you're really curious you can also check it out the step 3 is something that on only Sony has been doing on their refurbished boards um, and if you take a look in the Orbis mod guide it's something that is omitted there um, but this is the interesting part Sony has done this additional step basically and they reconfigure the power good signal thresholds for both RSX and cell and what I'm talking about is this section now and it is something that is not related to this part at all it is a completely different voltage and it's done to both RSX um, and cell so you if you plan to do this you have to do this here and also you have to find the second uh, microchip like this 
uh, near the cell section of the board and also do the resistor modifications there as well. Uh, and why do you need to do this? Well, this is something that I think was explained quite well on the PSX um, forum and um, this user under the name Rip Felix, he's been insanely helpful. He has studied the schematics and the uh, logic behind the engineering, um, the electrical engineering. He has done an enormous amount of work to research how you know the how everything works on the motherboard so I'm just gonna show you the important the most important part you can of course read it all later on your own if you want but um, he tried to explain uh, what this might do and it it's basically something that could increase stability and here he talks about this part um, the new low voltage threshold is now twice as low allowing much more voltage ripple before it triggers an error and what he thinks is they did it to reduce the frequency of the some of these errors 0 1 point uh, 1 0 0 1 and 1 0 0 2 and those are the errors that are currently associated with neck tokens and he also talks about how the lower lower voltage threshold is there to prevent system instability. Again, you don't need to be electrical engineer to understand this, but it is something that could improve stability, basically. But the th the interesting part is that it's not um, absolutely required if you want to swap your RSX, and even let's say if you were following um, the the Sony variant of changing the voltage here and let's say you don't want to change anything here um, it would still work but um, this there's no way of knowing really how much it will affect the stability of the system so I think it's recommended to do it to do all of these steps uh, the way that Sony was doing it uh, and step four is basically the same thing as I've talked about uh, in my first video it's just changing the 10k uh, resistor into the diagonal position and adding a 47k resistor when necessary anyway if you take a look at the orbis mod installation guide you can see that is it is already a lot simpler in a way so first thing you do instead of swapping the syscon and reprogramming the new syscon which you might have trouble finding also is that all you need to do is just to get the orbis mod and you need to install it and here was the picture it's also in my first video I only showed it for COK boards at the time and this is also COK board and uh, you can see it's kind of simpler basically it's also cheaper I think to buy this thing this little mod chip uh, the second thing is again it is something he has made easier to achieve like it is the same idea as the step 2 in case of Sony version but it is um, accomplished differently so what what he's doing here is he replaces the MOSFET that was here with another IC and that IC can provide 0 0.95 by default and uh, this is something I can also show you here and this IC BD3520 it's a MOSFET driver IC uh, which drives this MOSFET and uh, then that's how you get 1.2 volts going into RSX but uh, what we do is just we just replace the uh, this MOSFET and install our own part from the slim board which combines both the driver and the MOSFET so that new part uh, is inserted here instead of the MOSFET and it ignores this component completely I think or at least partly 
and it just does its own thing. It's basically outputting its own voltage, which is 0 0.95. So that's how we are tricking the original design, and we, in a way, we kind of hack it. And I think it's quite ingenious that uh, this guy had come up with it as well. Like he's amazing <laughs> at this kind of thinking and he didn't even have any schematics available to him he just kind of uh, analyzed it on his own that must have taken some work um, but yeah this seems to be a simpler way to accomplish the same result and um, I don't know if it's like accurate in terms of in terms of electrical engineering standpoint but it works and he claims that there were no complaints and the consoles worked uh, but of course it's up to you which way you want to follow and of course it's probably recommended to do it the official way the Sony way um, the reason he came up with this is because like I said he's running a business and he needed to f come up with the most uh, efficient way to do this to get the boards to work and uh, it also had to be simple enough you know if you think about uh, replacing or adding all these extra resistors it is actually quite a bit more work than just swapping one IC with another um, and the same thing uh, for the Cisco I don't think they had access to it or they couldn't read the contents of it so they just came up with this mod and um, it's all it's pretty genius actually it just injects the code into the communication line between the syscon and rsx and it's trying to fool the syscon that uh, the rsx that is installed on the board is still the original 90 nanometer version so this is actually all it's doing we couldn't read the contents of it it's password protected for obvious reasons but i think it's pretty genius